Hello, this video is how to program a GoTek floppy emulator for the Commodore Amiga. The GoTek hardware is available everywhere, including Amazon, for less than $30. It's a great bargain, although there is some setup involved, which requires a few more one-time purchases for most people. The bill of materials is the GoTek drive itself, a USB to TTL adapter, a USB thumb drive, jumper headers, and some female to female jumpers. In the description below this video, I went ahead and put links to all these items on Amazon, as well as some other helpful links. Okay, here's the GoTek board in its OEM package. It comes with absolutely nothing. Just a little drive emulation. And that's it. We have a seven segment, three digit LED display, a USB port, but no USB drive. So we're gonna have to get one of those. And uh, two navigation buttons, you know, forward and backward, and that's it. And then a little LED for drive access. First thing we wanna do is remove it from its case. Comes out easy enough. Push on the LED, pops right out. And there we go. Now, next we're gonna take it to the bench. Okay, got the GoTech board, we're at our soldering station. Here's a bag, I mean, these. you could buy a huge amount of these are really cheap. What we have here is we have uh, four across and then five across. So I'm going to go ahead and solder everything together. So we got a four and a five here. This handy dandy circuit board holder. I probably need to adjust the camera a little bit. Because we're a little farther away. A little closer actually. Okay, so I need this thing to rotate. Oh, that's really close. I think that's going to do it. Got some noisy neighbors out there. I am going to use Tape. I think to hold that on there until I get at least one solder joint going. I want it to be straight. You know, maybe I should put both in there and one will keep the other straight, hopefully. Knows. <laughs> yeah, that, might, that might work. Zoomed in here. I'm going to need to push in a little bit from the other side. To get this set. Am I going to need flux? Mm -hmm. I 
have to take a look at the others. Well, hmm. let's just keep going. See how we do. Just take a look at it real quick here. Yeah. Well, it looks pretty good. They're a little bit too close. They're kind of leaning in toward each other. So. I'm gonna probably take this one that I haven't finished yet, the top one, and sort of move it away a little bit like that. Hmm. That's good. They're not actually exactly perpendicular to the circuit board, but they're damn well close and certainly close enough to get some temporary jumpers on there. I guess maybe it is better to do them one at a time rather than stick both rows in. Good. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Here's the GoTech board with its pins installed. Uh, and here is a TTL, USB, USB to TTL programmer. And the only other thing we need is a single jumper. The TTL, also you need four jumper wires, female to female, to connect it to the GoTech. And then I like to have a reset switch. Um, this is, I mean, I, don't, I didn't bother to put a switch on it because all I have to do is really short these together. And I'm only going to need it while I'm programming it. Okay, so uh, first I'm going to start by putting this jumper here. And this enables the boot. I, this is labeled boot. I don't know why that's called boot. It enables programming of the GoTech. Without it, you can't connect to it or program it or anything. And so on this TTL adapter, we have, uh, I have the ground on black. That is going to go here. I have the brown on uh, VCC or voltage, plus five or plus 3.3 volts right there. And the remaining two connectors, uh, jumpers, one of them is RX and one of them is TX receive and transmit and you need to connect them to the opposite uh, on this board. So uh, the way that works is you take the TX key which is on red and hook it into the RX of the GoTech board 
and then you take the RX lead, which is orange, and connect it to the TX jumper. And then my reset goes right there on the end sideways. And that's it. Now it's time to plug it in to the computer. Okay, I'm just going to plug this bad boy in here. I like to grab things by the edges. So this thing lights up. We get no lights from this. On the computer, press the Windows key and type in Device Manager. Expand the ports entry and verify the COM port. Here we see it is COM port 14. Find the flash floppy firmware, that's quite a tongue twister, by searching for and going to the flash floppy wiki. Click the download flash floppy link. You download a zip file which you will need to open. You are looking for a .hex file. Copy it to a location that you will remember. Next, download a program called Flash Loader Demonstrator. I advise you to avoid selecting the first match in Google because as of the time I made this video, the page requires you to enter your name and email before allowing you to download. There are other links that don't. Once you've installed Flash Loader Demonstrator, select the serial port of your USB TTL and click Next. Here's where the reset switch might come in handy. On some GoTech boards, for some reason I had to reset the GoTech once or twice before I could get to the next page. It just freezes for several seconds before giving an error. Once the error comes up, reset the GoTech and try again. Repeat as necessary. Once you get past this window, you should see a warning about removing the protection. Go ahead and click that, and you should see a green traffic light. Click Next to proceed. Verify the target. It should be already set to something similar to this 128K. Select your flash floppy.hex file that you downloaded earlier. Check Global Erase and Verify After Download buttons and click Next. Green means you are good to go. Close the program and unplug the GoTech and USB. Don't forget to remove your little boot jumper along with all the other stuff. We're just going to stick this right back in its home. Here we have an already disassembled A500 ready for the GoTech. And if you notice uh, this drive pin header, there's a two over here, meaning that pin two is over here and pin one is gonna be right next to it. This ribbon cable has a red mark on it. And assuming that when I opened up this A500, it, this cable was backwards and it screwed me up. But uh, the red should be on the right side and on the GoTech, it goes on the right side as well. And then you plug power in. Okay, here we have a nice shot of the 500 with everything put together. And we got the floppy, you can see the floppy LED. And you can see the GoTech. So I don't have a thumb drive in there, but I'm gonna turn it on. And if you did everything right, it should say FF, and that's for flash floppy. 
Aha, I know what I forgot. And I always forget this. I always forget to move the jumper over to drive zero. So right now it's in, let's see if I can see that, I'll zoom in maybe. Right now there's a jumper, can't really see it, but it says S1 and it needs to be an SO, which is right next to it. And that's where we're going to go with it. And that should do it. That should do it. We need to format a USB thumb drive with the FAT32 file system. There are three ways to set up a thumb drive with Flash Floppy. Native mode, indexed mode, and HXC mode. We will start with native mode, which means I will simply copy disk images to the thumb drive without any modifications. So there's a green light that actually indicates drive activity. And um, let me just show you what's on the screen. <laughs> Not enough RAM, eh? So, well, it loaded 1942 first. So let's um, switch to disk two and reboot. Image two, file two, whatever. <clears throat> See which one it picked. And it's done loading. And there's our Typhoon Thompson. So it's completely serviceable, but um, you really don't know which file is assigned to which number, and that's uh, because this thing is in native mode. Uh, pretty useless um, for navigating unless you use just one or two files and take a guess, and if it's wrong, you guess the other way. So we're going to show you the uh, alternate way of indexing, which is the second way to do it. Back on the PC with the thumb drive plugged in, we see the three games. Also, interestingly, we have a file called imageA.cfg. Opening this reveals that this is how Flash Floppy remembers the last file you had selected. Now, to prepare these files for indexed mode, we simply need to change the file names to have DSKA and a number in front of the name. So this mode simply means changing the file names of the disk images to be sequential so that Flash Floppy will assign them to the corresponding numbers in the LED display. is now a zero, zero, zero. Switch to one, and reboot. One was what, NARC? Yeah, NARC. Two. is going to be Typhoon Thompson. For HXC mode, you need to download the HXC program and config file for the Amiga. There are also versions for the Atari ST and Amstrad CPC computers. Download and copy the Autoboot and HXC config files to the USB thumb drive along with any disk images you want to access. So this auto-boot program is actually an Amiga file manager program loaded automatically when you have selected 000 on the GoTech. 
The Amiga will boot into this file manager and allow you to select a specific image to load right now. However, you can also use this program to assign the disk images to slots, allowing you to know what disk image corresponds to what number on the front display. It's going to load from 000, which is that HXC program. And it's loaded now. So uh, what you want to do is hit help because you're not really going to understand how to navigate this. Of course you can use a joystick and you can use your cursor keys. Um, and if you just use your cursor keys and move up and down and press enter, it selects that uh, file and takes you to another screen. I'll demonstrate. Um, let's put Typhoon Thompson first. I'm going to press enter and then it's going to ask, it's actually asking which one to put it in. So obviously it's going to start at 001 because 000 is the uh, HXC program. So I'm going to select this one and it's, it just stuck that in that slot. And then let's say I want to do NARC second. So I'm going to go down to 2 and put that in there. And then 1942 in number 3. Now, that's pretty simple, but I mean, what do you do then? So I'm going to hit help and it actually tells you everything you need to know. Um, there's a three pages of this. It says say press enter when, you, when you're ready to go to the next page. But um, uh, there's a quick key like F7. We'll just select that file and reboot the, um, restart the computer automatically and just load from that and select it for loading. It puts it into slot one. So if I wanted to just pick NARC, now NARC I didn't assign to one, but if I wanted to just play that one, I'll just hit F7 and it'll save that slot number, which I put into 001 and NARC gets loaded. If I just rebooted the computer as is, it would have loaded this HXC program again. But again, all these methods that have been reviewed here, if you want to keep track of multiple files, the only way to do it is to write them down. So I'm going to write down 001 is Typhoon Thompson, 002 is NARC, 003 is 1942. Write them on a piece of paper or something, and then, or have them next to the computer. And uh, it's just a very clunky way to do it. What would be nice is if you could somehow scroll through them and see the names. So that's where an OLED screen comes in. Probably the most important uh, upgrade to this thing. And not too difficult either.